Hello, everyone. Welcome to the award show. Why don't you take us away, Jamie? Hello, guys. Great to see you today. And as David said, welcome to Upload VR's 2020 Best of VR Awards. It's great to be here today. I hope you all had a great holiday, great weekend, relaxing. Uh, now we're back to it to announce some uh, some winners. We've had a great, huge, busy 12 months in VR. Uh, lots of games, lots of hardware, lots of new experiences. Uh, if you watched a couple of weeks ago, we announced our nominations for the year. We had 15 categories to go through, uh, a couple of nominations in each. And today we are finally announcing the winners. And to uh, announce them with me, I have, you've already heard from him, David Jagno. Oh, I don't know which way I should be pointing. I'll just do this. I just realized my lighting is really bad. If I do this, it looks okay. There's a window right in front of my, uh, right here, so. We have Jesus hands. It's really, <laughs> we have holy hands. Oh. And there we've decided the less holy hands, Ian Hamilton. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome. I've got my blue, my blue lighting. Blue, blue hands. Blue hands. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Good. I'm doing I, good, uh, man. Did, how much VR did you play over the uh, Christmas break? None, none, none zero is appropriate like, answer yeah zero yeah for I us played, uh, it's, I played uh, one today it's it's weird right because for me like i associate vr with work so i try to avoid it but you yeah. know if i'm around i couldn't be around a bunch of family obviously because of the pandemic but if i had been i would have brought multiple quests and done lots of vr but that wasn't the case this time um mm. yeah but so why don't we explain to everyone why we are uh, showing our, our meat bag faces instead of our virtual avatars like usual. We are, we are real people today, not our usual virtual selves, because Heeny God is on, he actually takes vacation. God takes vacation at Upload VR. At Christmas? At Christmas. <laughs> at, only at Christmas, yeah. Um, which means we can't really use the virtual studio because if something breaks, which it did, we don't know what to do with it. So we're here. But hey, that's nice. It's a nice change of pace. Um, hi to everyone in the chat, by the way. Good to see you all. Uh, David's got some love already, as as always. Because, you know. I, I mean, I mean. Um, someone uh, asks, has the stream just started? Yes, someone. The stream has just started. You got here at the very start. Well done. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, good to see you, Tom and Lem. Good to see you, Jason. Say, cheapism. Good to see you all. Welcome, yeah. Good. Oh, Mr. So Random, do? don't don't you dare say that, Mr. Random. He says he prefers this over the virtual faces. Oh no, you, you, no, 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 you work. can't say that. Okay. How dare not, you? Not. You might you might summon Heeny he he God. <laughs> we like to listen to our audience here, Oblivia, but we will not listen to that. Okay, <laughs> our, our reality just starts dissolving around us, and we're just suddenly back in the studio. Yeah, in reality, we're actually our avatars cosplaying as our real selves, and this is all just a VR simulation. <laughs> so we're going to go through each of the categories. Uh, I'm going to read out the nominations that we announced a couple of uh, weeks ago again, uh, <laughs> and then ago. we will announce the winner, and then we will talk over why they won a bit, and uh, we'll have a good time. So grab a drink, maybe a little lunch, if it's lunchtime wherever you are in the world, maybe a little tea, maybe a little supper. Little... Maybe a Mountain Dew Zero. Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. Delicious. Okay. The Upload VR uh, 2020 Awards brought to you by Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. First category, <laughs> most promising early access. So this is for games that are still in early access, put out loads and loads of really good updates, not necessarily from this year, might have been a couple of years ago, but we thought uh, still worth recognizing uh, the incredible job some of these developers have done. So the nominations were Zero Caliber, Phasmophobia, Blade and Sorcery, Stride, and Contagion VR Outbreak, and the winner. But it did, it did, it did, it did, it Visually, can I announce it? I don't know. I'm not looking at the stream. And the winner is Phasmophobia. <laughs> Phasmophobia. Boom, ba, dun, dun, dun. Big game. Big year for Phasmophobia. Came out this year. A horror game with optional VR support, but. I think a lot of people really, really, really loved the VR support in this one, right, David? I know David did. For sure. Yeah, it's it funny because uh... I, I originally played this game in non-VR with some of Valerie's cousins, and I actually didn't know it was it had VR support. I just they told me download the game, we're gonna play it, and I was like, all right, let's do it, uh, because her entire family is super into Ghost Hunters on uh, the Travel Channel and Ghost Adventures and like the whole paranormal stuff. And um, I I'm not gonna get into it right now, 
I believe in ghosts. I've had a paranormal encounter twice in my life, so I'm going to go ahead and let you know that that's real life, okay? And so this game was awesome because they do an amazing job of really selling that atmosphere, and it was fantastic. So in VR, it's extremely special. I highly recommend it. You can't tell you had a ghost story without telling the ghost story. I'm sorry. Anyway, next weird. topic is... <laughs> The next topic is, congratulations to Phasmophobia, the next topic is most innovative design, uh, and here are the nominees. This is going to be a category for developers that showed some really interesting new mechanics in VR. Maybe it was like something that they really pioneered, like say, uh, one of the nominees, just to spoil you, was The Walking Dead, and we talked about the physics system, like that was something we hadn't really seen a lot of in VR before. Um, let's go through the nominees, and then we'll reveal the winner again. So... Vito VR was number one. Uh, the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Uh, the Waltz of the Wizards hand tracking update. Hand Space's hand tracking experiments. Half Life Alex's Russell gloves. The Room VR, a dark matter, just the whole game. And uh, <laughs> the Under Presents, The Tempest. And the winner was The <laughs> Under Presents. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> the Tempest, which was, of course, a game that released. Well, an experience that released uh, last year on PC VR headsets and Quest. Um, but this year, the guys at uh, Tender, Tender Claws, is, it is, right, um, released a really, really remarkable real-time live action uh, take on The Tempest that people could go in and participate in in VR. Um, and I, it was just such a really, really cool new way to explore VR theater in, in an existing platform that could show you how you know, existing platforms can be used as this evolving rolling thing that, you know, maybe one day, especially during a pandemic as we have right now, we can view these virtual yeah. locations as venues that go beyond reality, right? I know, Ian, you were very keen for this one to... Uh, yeah, I'm really glad it won. Um, it's It was one of those things where uh, they they don't let you talk to the other players in the, the base game, and that's such an uh, amazing kind of like limiting factor and then um when they added the tempest they allow whoever the performer is to actually speak to you and they it's amazing to see like when they limit those things that you can do the kind of creativity that comes out in that experience so you get in there and your your actor is kind of like uh like trying to get you into the performance and it's just so um it's unlike anything else uh, in VR, and it's amazing that we got to experience that this year. I know they brought back their performances for a little while mm -hmm. um, beyond what their initial run was, and I, I hope we see a lot more like that in the future. There's that Adventure Lab uh, experience that's sort of an early access um, where you can do like an escape room and you've got an actor or a performer guiding you through the escape room experience. But I, I hope we see a lot more things sort of take inspiration from the Tempest. That's it's that innovative and cool. Word. Yeah, for sure. And I, I really hope we see uh, big thing, big things from that team uh, moving into the new year because they're such a creative force, and uh, I think they have something really special there for sure. So congratulations to the Underpresents, the Tempest. Uh, moving on, most improved social platform. Now, obviously, a very big one in this year where we've all been. Separated so much, uh, I don't think social VR has ever been as important as it has been right now. Um, so you're going to see a lot of the kind of usual suspects in this category. Uh, and we wanted to choose the ones that we felt like delivered the most in the middle of, this, of these trying times. So the nominees were VR Chat, Rec Room, Alt Space VR, and Big Screen. And the winner was, or is, <laughs> VR Chat. A uh, big congrats to the VR chat team. Uh, I personally was very keen on uh, VR chat winning this category because I think one of the things that obviously as journalists we all do over the course of a year uh, in the VR calendar or the video game calendar or the technology calendar is go to a lot and a lot of events. Um, and obviously those couldn't really happen this year. And VR chat I found personally was the one that kind of filled in the gap the most in the absence of those events i found most creative people and event managers were actually going into vr chat and building their own worlds that were often quite similar to like the physical locations that we might have visited in years past yeah and yeah. developing these really really cool 
uh, virtual versions of them where I could go in as, you know, whatever representation of me I wanted to be and then just jump into an entirely another experience seamlessly. Um, one, one example of that was the Raindance Film Festival in uh, September. They completely rebuilt a London uh, venue inside VR. And then instead of, you know, if in real life, I would be going into that venue and putting on a bunch of different headsets to see the different experiences that were that were in the selection that year. And I didn't have to do that in VR chat. I then just pressed on the menu and jumped into the next experience. And that was with a performer that I'd never met before giving a silent performance as a scarecrow or any number of other things. Sometimes it was even apps that had been remade in VR chat that you know used to exist outside of that world, but it just became easier for them to orchestrate the whole thing inside that world. So I thought that was a really, really uh, important thing to recognize. And I think, I think VR chat, all of these platforms are incredibly special. Um, Rec Room's had a, a giant, giant year. Altspace is doing incredible things with a full event schedule throughout the week. Big Screen obviously continues to update and make the virtual world more convenient in really interesting ways. Um, but I felt specifically in the year of the pandemic, VR chat was probably the one that had stepped up the most. So that was... We, we, we discussed a little bit Rec Room. I mean, I, I thought Rec Room grew an enormous amount this year. But as we were discussing it, um, I remembered the um, the hand tracking community that lives inside, Rec, in, lives inside VR chat. And that was because I was I was researching how good the hand tracking is on the quest, mm. and uh, it's good, and I and I uh, it's impressive, but it's not quite good enough for uh, the deaf community to really reliably communicate. And uh, sure enough, there's already this robust, strong community of people who have adapted all the hand signs to work inside of VR chat. And it's it's really it's hard to think of like a better example of just how creative that community is and how mm -hmm. many different communities are contained within that larger community in, in VR yeah, chat. Like, I know there's there's people that host entire uh, dance classes with the full body tracking using the vibe tracking pucks on their feet. And, uh, you know, like people that do entertainment and stuff by using the full body tracking and. It's really impressive. It's it's really cool. How did you guys enjoy your time inside Facebook Horizon this year? <laughs> I forgot Ooh. that existed. Well, that what happened to it? Do. Where is it? Like, why isn't it it's out? out there. I've been in it. I've been in it twice. But it's not public yet. No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. It's I don't not... understand. Yeah. Also, notably, not in our uh, nominations for that exact reason. <laughs> they're, they're they're gunning for that 2021 award. Yeah, I know. I can see. Uh, I can see Mark somewhere right now, just greasing his palms, waiting for it. Uh, <laughs> I'll bring over the VR launch chat. button, waiting for. <laughs> congrats to VR chat. Uh, we'll move on to the next award, which is for best VR for fitness. Uh, again, another important year for this category, as gyms were closing. It was harder to go outside, uh, and you know, in years prior, we've been finding that VR fitness is this kind of nice bonus added on effect of playing lots of VR games, but people are now starting to really kind of hone in on that. And we've seen a lot of that this year. So the nominations were Supernatural uh, from Move In, the B uh, DLC for Beat Saber, which, you know, there was about a million Beat Saber packs this year, uh, VR Workout, a side quest app that used hand tracking, Until You Fall, the roguelike game from Shell Games, uh, Fit XR, which is an extension of Box VR that uh, that evolved into this kind of platform for all kinds of uh, experiences earlier this year, and O Shape, uh, which got an Oculus Quest version uh, earlier this year, and the winner is Drumroll, O Shape. So I'm very very happy to see O Shape win this one. I, of all the rhythm based VR games. Uh, o Shape is probably my favorite, and I think it really came to life on the quest. Um, the reason why, for me, it wins a fitness award is because in any given track in O Shape, you're actually getting kind of a varied workout. First of all, you're grabbing coins, then you're also avoiding blocks, and then you're also moving to fit human-shaped holes in walls. So 
you're getting like free varied things within the space of a workout. But then also once you come out of the track and go into the menu, you have like a really, really diverse range of options to uh, to tailor the experience to your needs. So that if you do want that really, really hardcore demanding workout, you can absolutely tailor the song to give you that. Or if you're like tired and you want to scale it back a bit, you can do that too. It's, you know, Beat Saber kind of has that with different difficulties, but it's it's not to the same level in my opinion. And then of course you've got, you know, support for custom tracks and stuff like that as well, which which gives O Shape a kind of an edge, especially on uh, on Quest. I, I think it was a really interesting year for this category. I I know Ian, you were very keen on Supernatural. I would I would love a big part of me to uh, to give the award to Supernatural, but I think the economics of Supernatural are still very much in question. Uh, I don't agree with this. I, I don't think that the I don't think that's an issue. I think it's uh, still I think they're finding their niche um, in mm. something cheaper than going to the cheaper and safer than going to the gym and way cheaper than Peloton, which is, I think, sort of the model that they're going after. Um, I'm I'm sort of yeah, I'm, I'm extraordinarily biased because I know the creator uh, over there at mm. Supernatural. And then also I'm seven into a seven day streak in Supernatural. I would like to see what they do over the next year with Supernatural. I think that's a, a really, I think there's a lot of room to grow as a platform there. So maybe next year. Yeah, for sure. And I, I definitely if this, think this if is. If this category were up to me, I probably would have picked FitXR. But I don't disagree with the choice of O-Shape. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think FitXR is the most well-rounded and accessible uh, you know, no no subscription fee. It's got dancing stuff in there now that is kind of similar to some of the stuff O-Shape does. Um, so I like FitXR a lot. I think it's grown really well. Um, of the ones I've tried, that's the one that I could see myself going back to most consistently, probably. Look, I, I love the... I've, lo- I've learned to love the trainers in Supernatural. It took me a while to kind of like yeah. get over the fact that I know they're not there. I know they're recorded. But uh, once I got over that, they're still making me laugh. They're still getting inside my head and getting me going. And it's really, really enjoyable. Yeah, I I mean, I think you both raised great points, though, that maybe next year is actually a very important thing for this category, because I think those are two, specifically the two in in this list that are going to keep growing and evolving. Um, This is a very also a very competitive category, because I think you can make a case for all of the ones nominated and plus in chat, they're, they're naming other games that weren't even nominated that are also great, like Blast On, like Synth Riders. Um, there's, Synth Riders you know, a there's a lot of really good fitness, if not fitness targeted, at least as a result of playing, you get, you know, fitness benefits VR games, uh, like Until You Fall. You know, like there's just so many that, that could have been nominated. It's a very tough category. Yeah, for sure. And Brandon, we just, so voted, congrats- we just sure. vote on this internally, Brandon. It's mo- It's basically just the three of us. <laughs> pretty much the senior editorial you, stuff you, you know exactly who to hate for not getting the decisions right yeah not getting after it that guy that guy and this guy <laughs> <laughs> so uh congrats to shape moving on uh is the award for the most anticipated vr game of next year uh we had a video a couple of weeks ago going through a lot of these discussing the ones that we personally were really looking forward to next year uh, we put them into a nominations list, which looks like uh, Rafe the Oblivion Afterlife, Mask Maker, uh, one nomination for Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell VR as one nomination because they've only been announced as like a pair so far. We don't know much about either of them. Uh, Lo-Fi, Elysia, and Sniper Elite VR. Well, before we announce the winner, I just want to give a shout out to Team 21, the Elysia dev in the chat, saying here comes the big sad. <laughs> Earlier on, someone said they were going to stop working on the game if it doesn't win. Oh, oh. Anyway, right, well, anyway, going. get your letter of resignation Great ready because the here is the winner. The winner is Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell VR. Oh, we're really looking forward to Alicia too. Um, the reason being, uh, this I think this represents a real interesting moment for vr a real big triple a push from a real big triple a publisher and studio we don't know a lot about the games yet but they are certainly going to be ubisoft's biggest pushes into vr and if they are successful they could have huge huge 
uh, connotations for the platform. Lots of people saying Lone Echo 2, but I mean, Lone Echo 2 should have been out by now, so I don't think you can win that award like a million times. Yeah, they haven't row. said anything about that game in over a year. Like, maybe it would have won last year, but I'm not still anticipating that game because I don't know anything else about it. I forgot about it. Who cares? Mm. That's Oculus failed. Okay. Oculus failed Ready to Down Studios with Lone Echo 2. It hasn't even came out yet. They already failed them. I'm throwing that out there. Also, another but shout out to Team 21 for another great joke. They said they're going to go work on Zenith now. <laughs> <laughs> Zenith, no, don't do that. Zenith wasn't even in the nominations. That's not. I... <laughs> yeah. You've already got a leg up over Zenith. Come on. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, it, interesting list of games coming next year for sure. Um, I definitely think we'll be seeing some really, really big VR titles. And I think for us, we feel like those are at the forefront of all those uh, those games coming. Um, and hopefully we see more from it this year. Hopefully we get to play one of them this year. Um, and we, yeah, like I said, we have a video talking about all of those nominations and more from a couple of weeks back. Um, so do go check that out because we go into more detail about each one and why we're looking forward to them. Moving on. Best developer a hotly contested category yeah we decided uh, the winner of this one like an hour ago like this was the yeah, last that was one that we could come to terms on much arguing because the best winner uh the winner of the best developer doesn't necessarily mean they made the best game doesn't necessarily mean they made the best game this year they might not have even released anything this year it's about development practices about certain philosophies about certain innovations all those kinds of things get different developers on this list for very different reasons. So the nominations were uh, EA Motive, the developer of Star Wars Squadrons, Skydance Interactive, the developer of The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, Rust, the de uh, developer of Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades, uh, Mirage Soft from Real VR Fishing, and uh, Arvor between, uh, behind many things such as Pixel Ripped, uh, The Line, and... Uh, Another Pixar Rip game. <laughs> uh, the winners are, or the winner is, Rust from uh, H3VR. A long, a long waiting win. I know uh, Ian was very adamant that uh, Rust, Rust takes home the prize this year. It was nominated last year as well. We we discussed this a lot. Um, we, yeah, this is this is the big debate. Um, I think I think Rust contributions to the vr industry won't won't be recognized for years i think mm. uh if you go find uh anton hans dev videos you'll see uh, a like to dislike ratio that i i don't think i've ever seen on another channel like 2.5 thousand upvotes on every video versus like 20 or 12 downvotes on every video and whenever i see those numbers i think I think those are the future VR developers watching those videos. Those are going to be the people making the next generation of VR games. And uh, there's, uh, you know, you, you could follow him on Twitter. You, you, you might have been blocked by him. You might have gotten into battles with him. Um, but you, you might not follow him on Twitter. You might disagree with his politics. But there's a relationship he has with his community that i don't think any other studio has that um you know he's got a uh that that whole studio has a very they care a lot about their audience and they're constantly delivering new content to them and listening even if even if they don't actually incorporate what their community is saying to them they're still there and listening intently to their community and it shows um and just over this last month, they've uh, released an update every single day for December. And they even put it in uh, a, a beta branch so that uh, all the people complaining about uh, having to download a new update for their Steam game every single day through December, they don't have to deal with that. You can, only, you can opt into that on the beta branch. And there's just, I think there's a thoughtfulness to that approach consistently for four years that really needed to be recognized and so i'm i'm really glad that you guys uh gave in and uh let us uh recognize rust for the contributions they're giving to the vr industry now and hopefully when that next generation of vr developers gets their building games i really think that 
Rust is going to have a big impact. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, this this is a hard category. I mean, all of those developers did some incredible things this year. And um, I mean, it's it's hard because, you know, I easily could have made a case for everyone else on the list. You know, I mean, we we literally got into an argument about, you know, not not just this person should win. You know, why? Why shouldn't they win? It was like, well, what about the other four? You know, there's five of these developers that all did amazing things. So it was it was a good year for, for VR. It was a good year. Yeah, for sure. And, and one thing we said about the category when we were talking about it earlier today is that unlike every other category in the awards, it's not all measured up against the same criteria. Everyone's there for yeah, individual reasons. Yeah. reasons. Um, and I totally agree with what Ian was saying uh, I and mean, about why that is you know, such a, a good choice for this year, especially, you know, I think I think there's a lot of power in it as well that uh, Rust was no- nominated last year as well. And just shows the consistency there. Um, and in some ways, you, you know, two nominations should... To be clear, yeah, I mean, that game has been out win. since the launch of Room Scale VR, and it's still getting updated. Yeah. I didn't I didn't explain that, but, like, it's... There's not anything that's been as consistent as that. Yeah. So, congratulations to Rust. We're moving on to Best Cooperative Multiplayer. So, multiplayer games where you don't shoot each other in the face, but you shoot other people in the face with the help of your friends. And, you know, other <laughs> things of this nature. The nominations were Space Team VR, Cookout a Sandwich Tail, Star Wars Squadrons, Real VR Fishing, and Path of the Warrior. And the winner was Cookout a Sandwich Tail from Resolution Games. Uh, this is one that I think a lot of us on the team actually really, really enjoyed. Uh, came out on Quest and uh, I believe Rift uh, a couple of months ago. Basically an Overcooked clone at the end of the day, it's very much taking the heart of Overcooked, that kind of frantic uh, juggling of different elements in the kitchen, uh, making them a bit more unique to VR. Um, and the thing that I think really won it for me here is that uh, Cookout has a full campaign, meaning you're not kind of just signing in and playing for as long as you want every once in a while, then maybe coming back to it after one or two sessions um you're actually like driven to get through a whole process Uh, me and ian and xena played it a couple of months ago and we had you know just such a fun time like shouting at each other cutting up different ingredients throwing them about the place um and and then you know just after that just working through a campaign there's there's not many chances to do that in vr co-op these days like there aren't many co-op campaigns um and for me i think it's resolution studios best game yet probably uh, they put out like loads and loads of content every year. Some of it's hit, some of it's miss. Yeah, uh, but I think for me, I think this category would have been a little harder to decide if the campaign in Squadrons was co-op. If you could play through that with a friend, it would have been a little more difficult, I think, to come to a decision because right now, yeah. the only version of co-op you get is a single, you know, mode in the multiplayer against bots, and then everything else is PvP or a solo campaign. So, I think that one had more potential, but. Um, you know, they didn't fully kind of embrace the areas it could be co-op. I think a uh, cookout, you know, it's, it's just fun, you know? Like, I think Resolution has nailed their formula of just making games that make you smile when you play them. And it's so, mm-hmm. um, it's so infectious, you know? Like, and it's stuff that you wouldn't even think would be fun. Like, you know, throwing acorns at squirrels. Like, that doesn't sound fun, but Akron was amazing. And then this game is, you know, such a blast. It's, it's kind of like they take Mario Party mini games and turn them into full games almost. Mm-hmm. And they do a great That's job really of that. I still I still have such a vivid memory of the first time I realized I could reach across to the other person's ingredients and grab their ingredients or press their button to get their fridge open and grab the ingredient and put it, you know, do everything to it. And it's so it was so magical to find out you could do that and uh even walk around the whole table and and grab something from the other end of the table. Very, very fun. Yeah, for sure. So congratulations to Cookout. Uh, moving on to competitive multiplayer, which is the games where you do shoot your friends in the face. Uh, and starting off that list of nominations is uh, Star Wars Squadrons. Then we have Population 1, 11 Table Tennis VR, Beat Saber, and Medal of Honor Above and Beyond. And the winner was... Population 1, the Battle Royale game uh, that released a couple of months ago, uh, just a bit after the launch of the Quest 2, I believe. 
um we played quite a lot of that back then me and david did uh so good. still jump into it every now and again for a couple of matches i think population one lots of people wanted to be the vr battle royale because they were kind of rising in popularity at the same time um and i think population one far and away does the best job of it i, I think david uh, what was my time to sickness in level in that game was like two minutes i was just i had yeah, to sit I mean, down started the match and you wanted to quit that's, that's yeah what happened there. yeah i mean <laughs> population one is just it's it's hard to really put your finger on it on what it is about i think for me the 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 moment for me was whenever i played on quest 2 and it was just so incredibly polished and smooth i think if you compare it to any other VR shooter out there, if you compare it to Pavlov, Contractors, Onward, even Medal of Honor, which from EA or, you know, anything out there is just so smooth. And I think that, you know, really sets it apart because you go into this map that is so big with giant buildings. You can, you know, fly around on your glider. You can, you know, loot all these different kinds of weapons. They have, you know, environment. You can build walls, you know, on the fly, like in Fortnite. It's got so many features that you don't see in other VR games. And then on top of that, it runs flawlessly on Quest and PC with crossplay. Um, it was just, it was an incredible accomplishment. I think they did a great job. And um, the fact that it went totally silent for two years of development time, and then all of a yeah. sudden came out and it was actually, you know, lived up to its potential um, that, you know, that you don't see that very often. So that, that was very uh, impressive to me. And I think the gunplay is good. It's very fun. It's uh, for a battle royale game. It's actually incredibly uh, approachable. You know, if you if you don't get motion sick, uh, obviously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, it's yeah. it's a great game. Super fun, and they have a functional party system. Can we talk about that? How even uh, Metal <laughs> get, of Honor to get on our list just with a just with yeah, a functional party system for real. No room code. Like even Medal of Honor, like from EA and Response, they made a Star Wars game. They got nominated for Game of the Year, and they can't do a party system. That is baffling to me because even on Medal of Honor, you have to, you can't invite from Steam to Oculus across across platforms. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's so stupid. Um, but yeah, so yeah. awesome. Awesome game. Yeah, congratulations, uh, Population One. We'll hear from you again just in a minute because now it's time to announce one of the biggest, literally, uh, categories of the show, which is best quest games. Now, if you look at this, uh, if you look <laughs> at our a lot. Me, uh, weeks ago, there's a lot on here. Yeah. And it's, it's a real interesting one because obviously, you know, Quest is just this this exploding platform right now. Everything is coming to Quest. Um, and while there's lots of exciting releases on it, you know, pretty much every month of the Mo, not many of those are going to find their way onto our overall best games list because they were probably ports of something that released a few years ago or, you know, something along those lines. Um, so it was important for us in this category to recognize a lot of the developers that released really, really good ports or, you know, from games that might be as much as four years old uh, and make sure they had their, their fair shake as well. So the nominees in this category are The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, Population One, Echo VR, Ghost Giant, Onward, Until You Fall, In Death, and some game called FNAF, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> VR. <laughs> oh no, you might, you might draw them all into the comments. Well, yeah, just... I, I already accidentally uh, revealed the winner. I thought you were about to say it because that's what you did every other time. So, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so congrats to The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Let's hope you revealed the right one. Yeah, um, of course. Yeah. Lots of lots of big reasons uh, to give this game uh, best quest game. First of all, it came out on Quest Two. Uh, at launch, came out at the end of the year alongside that headset after a really good port to PSVR. A really good original PC VR version. The PC VR version, the original, released in January. It was so technically ambitious. I couldn't envision how they would pull off like anything like a competent Quest port. Um, it's and one of those things where we expected it to get delayed for like two years, right? I mean, there's yeah. no way we could expect that to get on Quest. Yeah, with the way with the, every other port goes, we, I would have assumed that it would arrive. I, we would have almost had like a cyberpunk situation kind of on our hands, right? Of it just would have, they wouldn't have said much about it. Then it got here and it was complete mess. Um, but that I was so relieved to find that wasn't the case as I was testing quest two. And 
the core game is so incredibly rich and fun and i think so like has so much longevity that normally when you do like game of the year nominations and stuff stuff that came out in january is kind of actually in the danger zone a little bit because yeah, so much amazing yeah. stuff comes out towards christmas when you're talking about traditional games that you know the stuff all the way back when gets forgotten about but just so not the case here uh partly because of you know that staggered release but then just the quality of each release and then the quality of that physics system which i'm sure we'll talk about more and more killing a zombie in the game is just incredibly satisfying time and time again whether you're doing just you know a basic uh head stab move or you're doing something a little more creative yeah it's it's never not fun to be in that world it and feels playing so with good. sandbox zombies and then they just built a whole game around that as well with you know systems that you know do occasionally crumble every time there's like a human npc but he can't quite understand that there's a zombie around the corner or something like that yeah that stuff's there but at the same time the depth at which it creates the kind of opportunities for unique player moments that that uh, enablizes is just there's nothing else like it in vr and then to have all of that on a standalone headset I, d I don't think there could have been any question that The Walking Dead could have won this category, personally. Yeah, I mean, it's because this game is right up there on PC VR, which is the highest of high-end VR. This is easily, yeah. to me, one of the best VR games that's ever been released. You know, it just happened to come out the same year as a bunch of other great games. But, you know, the fact that that entire game, no compromises, no corners cut, is playable from start to finish on Quest is just remarkable. Like, I... And, I don't even understand it. I <laughs> and it dethroned super hot from our top quest list too. I think that's worth mentioning too, right? Yeah, it did. It true. did. If you read that on Christmas Day, then you already knew it was going to win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to, also to clarify, and also to be fair here, the Quest Two version is definitely superior to the Quest One version. There oh, is sure. a major difference. You know, even even just visually, you can tell the difference. So if you can play it on Quest Two, but it's still good on Quest One. Um, it's just not quite yeah, as impressive. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I, I played it on Quest 1 a uh, fair amount, and I still... Chris said that sounded like a candidate for a best developer. That was one of our discussions, right? We did discuss... Yeah, yeah. yeah. yep. So, yeah, that was that was a key part of the discussion here, was that they just did these incredible ports, but at the same time, we could, we, I mean, we're recognizing that by giving the game uh, the best the best Quest game, and maybe there'll be more of that in a bit. But first, let's move on to the best PC VR game. Uh, so as David was saying, the highest of the high end, uh, and these are the nominees, Half-Life Alex, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, Star Wars Squadrons, Population One, and Thief Simulator VR. And the winner is the half, no, yes, Half-Life Alex. I thought <laughs> I got it wrong for a second. <laughs> Which, yeah, Half-Life Alex, isn't it? Like, just really, like, I got to play this uh, ahead of time. Uh, I got to play it for the uh, review embargo back in back in March. And very strange, surreal experience to be one of the first people to be able to step back into that world um, after so, so long. Um, like so many people, Half-Life 1, 2, Episode 1 and 2, very close to my heart. Um, and it was amazing to just... Even just putting VR aside for a second, just see that Valve hadn't lost any of its own connection with that world. And in fact, if anything, you know, made that connection much, much stronger and much, much deeper um, in the past 13 or so years that it's been. And then on the VR front, it just delivered in so many incredible ways in terms of the physics again, which might not been might not have been on quite on the same level as the walking dead or not used in the same way as the walking dead at, at the very least but just there to create this tangible authentic world uh, everything from the russell's gloves which were nominated earlier to you know the kind of puzzles that were involved in the game just had vr absolutely considered and then some of the while while as a whole campaign you know that it's like any other game there are peaks and troughs and whatnot some the the peaks, you know, the Jeff level. If you haven't if you haven't played that, the the comments are saying no spoilers. So yeah, that's a good idea. I'm not going to spoil. Yeah. I'm just saying when there's a level called Jeff, you'll know that you're in for the best <laughs> one of the best levels in the game. And I won't repeat the mistakes of of summer. Um, <laughs> I yeah, you, you're just you're just in for about 
half an hour there of just incredibly well thought out VR design that goes above and beyond pretty much anything else you'll see in the industry today. Um, uh, one thing I did miss out from reading from the nominees was Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, reason that we didn't go with that one is kind of hard to play it right now. I don't think any of us have really managed to get it running quite as well as we would have liked. And, and even if we had, I'm, I'm not sure it would have been able to take probably Alex or The Walking Dead anyway, even though it is such an incredible experience. But um, I, yeah, I don't know. I want to guys... call out the non-player characters in yeah. Alex. That's They're just in a class by themselves. And I hope we see a lot more of that in the future. Yeah, for sure. For yeah, because sure. that's something that is easy to overlook, I feel like, because in non-VR games, typically you can kind of gloss over and not pay too much attention to NPCs because you're you're used to, you know, cardboard cutouts of people that don't really do or say anything other than serve your, you know, direct interests and whatever you're trying to do. But when you're in VR, like if that person isn't believable, you know, if they're if their animations are stiff, if their voice acting is poor or if their, you know, writing is weird or if they're doing things that don't seem that like that stands out so much. And almost yep. every other VR game is very bad about this, but I think, you know, Valve is is someone that has prided themselves on even back to the original half-life you know that they were groundbreaking npcs and um you know this series has always been great about that so this game really pushes it above and beyond and i i hope other developers can kind of take note you know and kind of look and see at what they've done here and uh you know pay more attention hopefully fingers crossed yeah for sure uh moving on to our final platform specific award is best psvr game now obviously it's been a very interesting year for psvr PS4 kind of winding down, the PS5 now out, but I think we still saw some really incredible uh, PSVR content uh, that makes this actually a very interesting category. Uh, so the nominees were Dreams, Iron Man VR, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, Star Wars Squadrons, Star Wars Vader Immortal, and Pixel Ripped 1995. And the winner was The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Surprise. Again, <laughs> Yeah, again, just a really, really, really incredible port, I felt, um, especially on PSVR, where you're not only are you talking about technical limitations, but you're also talking about tracking limitations. And I actually think Skydance really paid attention to how best to utilize the move controllers in this game uh, to make sure that there weren't so many barriers to the actual kind of physical actions that you do. Um, but like I said, really, really incredible year for the platform. Again, Sony continues to put out some amazing support. Uh, Dreams, I thought, was really, really fantastic. I just thought the the experience probably wasn't native to VR enough for it to be recognized. Unfortunately, you still have to do large, large swathes of that game to get it up and running and to understand it enough to go into the VR support. Iron Man VR, uh, me and David, absolutely huge fans of. I love Iron Man VR. Again, I just think technical Im limitations are very... Uh, very troubled there the loading times are just just too long at the end of the yeah, day even on ps5 right. that game still has long load times i mean it's they like cut it in half but whenever cutting it in half is still 40 seconds that, that's still pretty bad so yeah, exactly yeah and, and yeah i mean I, I love that game but it, it it wasn't better than walking dead like not not even close yeah, I'll, I'll give you that for sure. Uh, yeah, and then Squadron's obviously incredible. Vader Immortal was a really good port, and uh, Pixel Ripped, really, really, really strong follow-up to the original there. So uh, congrats to all the winners. Congra uh, Noms, congrats to uh, The Walking Dead for, I believe, the second win of the evening. Racking um, them up. It, it's kind of funny. There's a couple comments talking about zombie zombie games, and it's just it's funny to think that here we are, what four four years on from room scale VR, and remember just how many wave shooters of zombie games we had, and how we were we were sick of them. I mean, yeah. but it's just kind of crazy to kind of think that it. He's back. Yeah, that was a weird. Phone call. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kind of crazy to think that it it we've come full circle there a little bit. Yeah, for sure, and I, I, that's the interesting thing about Saints and Sinners is. If you were ever going to say, you know, when do we reach the next generation of VR? What's the, what's the sign that we've reached the next generation of content? You would look at, like, say, Arizona Sunshine, which came out in 2016. And then you'd look at Saints and Sinners and see everything we've learned about the medium since then. And just how that totally feels like a next generation experience to me, even though, you know, it's appearing largely on the same platforms. 
So moving on to one of the coolest categories that we do here at Upload, uh, one of our favorites uh, amongst the entire team for the most immersive moments. So this is for a moment in an app, a game, an experience, something that, you know, really, really stood out. And as you had a headset on, you'd completely forgotten it was there, it completely melted away. You had real control, maybe you had real agency, maybe you really felt something was there, maybe you just really felt you were standing in a virtual world. I'd love uh, to see the commenters so, call out their favorite moments too while we're while we're yeah, that's a, guitars. Yeah, that's a very, please. very good thing. So while I go through the noms, yeah, but be typing those out. So nominations are the Jeff level and Half Life Alex. So I said it was coming at some point. Uh the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, your first zombie kill. Uh, Phasmophobia, your first ghost encounter. The cockpit experience in Star Wars Squadrons. Uh, Quest multiplayer in 11 Table Tennis VR. Uh, avoiding your angry mother in Pixel Rip 1995. And learning to paddle in Phantom Cover Ops. And the winner was... What was it? I've gotten... Star Wars Squadrons! Piloting oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank iconic you, ships! <laughs> And Star Wars Squadrons. And I, I think this one, um, you know, it, this is another category that was extremely difficult to pick a winner in uh, because arguably any, you know, good or great VR game has some type of really amazing defining moment. Uh, but I think it was just such incredible wish fulfillment to finally have a AAA VR game that lets you fly X-Wings and TIE Fighters and all the ships that everyone grew up loving. And it's just, it's so amazing because it, you know, I never, I never really thought that a game like this would come to VR so soon. I thought it would be, a, you know, a long ways away mm. before we got this kind of game in VR. And the fact that not only it came out, but that EA published it and they agreed and allowed them to include VR support from top to bottom across the whole game from the very beginning. And it has full HOTA support, even on consoles, it's just in full crossplay, you know, like full crossplay, which is crazy. And um, it, it just, it works so well. It was very fun. Um, I know there were some performance problems some people had here and there. Um, but, yeah. you know, for the most part, this game, it was just a fantastic achievement. And um, it's it's a relatively small in scope game compared to other AAA projects, especially from EA. You know, they only charged 40 bucks when it came out. They knew what they were, um, you know, releasing when they released it. And... Um, it had a great update that came out back in November and here in December with some new ships and a new map. And uh, th this game was just, it was fantastic. And sitting in that cockpit for the first time is like, that's probably like top 10 all time gaming moments for me. And I'm not even a big, like that big of a Star Wars fan. So like, it was just so immersive. It's it's incredible. Um, Forgive the small intermission. I don't know if David can correct this. Ian, you're on your side. Yeah, he has to fix oh, it. I okay. can't. Hold on. Fix it, Ian. But while you're doing that, we will talk a bit more. Well, um, did I, I agree, David. No. I, no. So there, I reviewed there it goes, the, there it goes, yeah. We're all good. I reviewed the uh, Reverb G2 earlier this year. Um, and the first thing I had to see in that headset was Squadrons. Um, and I tried it on my old PC and it ran terribly. And I tried it on the newer PC and it ran great. And that was fantastic. And... Cop cockpit VR is still, for me, easily the most immersive way to experience VR, first and foremost. There is nothing like the proximity of, like, even something like as old as E Valkyrie, when you first put the headset on there, yeah. and you just have everything around you, and it feels so tangible and authentic, and, and like, it's really, really Because I think if you look at, you know, what the VR experience is trying to convey versus what you're literally doing in physical real life, it's not really ever going to get any closer than a cockpit because I'm sitting in a chair, you know, that's like a gamer racing chair that feels like a cockpit chair already. And then I've got a HOTUS, you know, on my desk, I've got the headset on, you know, other than like the HOTUS not being exactly the same as the cockpit version that I have in my ship, it doesn't get much closer, you know, like I, I literally feel like I'm sitting in a cockpit. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to top that. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So that's, uh, when when you paste all of that onto the Star Wars universe, it's just a no brainer, right? At the end of the day, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so yeah, get, uh, free DLC out for uh, Squadrons this month, right? And I, I let's hope to see more going into the new year. Maybe maybe something along the lines of a sequel. Maybe something on PS Five. Hopefully at some point we'll see. Um, yeah, that'd be really good, wouldn't it? 
So moving on, uh, we are coming to the nearish the end now. I think we've got the last three categories to go. Uh, we're going to do one of my personal favorite categories, uh, the best experience. So this is for stuff that is not a game. Uh, it might be a movie. It might be something that is still interactive, but you wouldn't necessarily class it as, you know, like your, your traditional video game, might not have objectives and whatnot. Um, and this is where, you know, creativity in VR really, really thrives. And we see some really strange, interesting stuff. So the nominations for this were Paper Beast, Gloomy Eyes, The Line, The Key, Paper Birds, uh, and again, The Under Presents, The Tempest. And the winner was Paper Beast. Uh, this is a game, or oh, I've already messed up. This is an experience that's really, really close to my heart. Um, I absolutely adored Paper Beast when it came out earlier this year. It is, if you don't know, it's like a virtual safari that builds this kind of digital ecosystem. Uh, it's from the creators of uh, games like From Dust and uh, Another World. So some real, real great uh, pedigree behind it. Uh, and it's just this phenomenal, phenomenal two to three hour exploration of interacting with things like animals in VR and different kinds of environments and different kinds of physics. Uh, and even though you come to, let's say, like tease like kind of weird tiger animals with some food and like play with them and like make them chase food and stuff, and that's incredible in itself, there's actually a very natural organic puzzle game at the heart of it as well that sees you kind of manipulating sand to make new rivers and avoiding waves and making different hills to get access new passages and it's just a really organic incredible authentic experience that you really do feel like you can reach out and touch um it only takes about two to three hours to complete uh but it's probably the most two to, uh, like memorable two to three hours i've had in vr this year personally especially just even at the start um, when it's introducing you to its world and you realize you start to test the boundaries and of what you can do with the animals. I think just an incredible, incredible experience. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a big one this year. I think moving on this, this, this category is only going to become more and more important, uh, as we start to see more and more VR movies coming out. Uh, there's some projects I'm really looking forward to next year, uh, that I'm sure we'll be talking about on the website soon. Um, so yeah. Let's uh, let's move it on to the second to last category. Yeah, this this, which, this uh, category was very hard to decide. Let me yeah, tell you, uh, I don't even need best, to say anything. Best else. hardware, <laughs> best hardware, and the nominees for best hardware released this year are the Oculus Quest Two, uh, the HP Reverb G Two, Pico Neo Two I, and the PlayStation Five. And the winner was the Oculus Quest Two. Surprise. Um, it's uh, still an interesting pick, I think, in, in this year, uh, as you know, it, it's such a controversial headset in so many ways. Uh, just after Christmas, you know, looking on Reddit and seeing stories of people getting their headset, what, like three days ago now, and then already on Reddit saying I had to take it back because of the Facebook enforcements. Maybe I didn't want to do that and I didn't know about it, or maybe... I've had problems with my account being banned. I remember over Christmas, my we played table tennis. My only experience in VR uh, over Christmas was uh, setting up 11 table tennis on two quests and doing 11 table tennis. And sure enough, uh, he accidentally hit the streaming button in the Oculus menu and started broadcasting our match to his daughter's Facebook page because that's who was logged into the quest. <laughs> and so... His, you know, like there's people commenting on our match that are, you know, his daughter's friends on Facebook thinking that his daughter's playing table tennis with it just was a mess. And there's no good reason that Facebook needed to uh, stuff that in everyone's faces well, other you, than it you serves be, you Facebook. You better hope Facebook doesn't hear this because now they're going to know that you fraudulently use a quest and you were not his daughter. So they're going to shut down both of your accounts and they're going to ban you completely. She, she she's thirteen years old, so it's not a problem. Wow. Yes, still sure. an imposter. That's uh, I'm sorry. We, we, we didn't. We couldn't. I couldn't log in a guest. Was there? Was I supposed to re reset the entire factory? Yes. Reset the entire headset and log him in. That's what I'm supposed that's, to do. That's literally what their FAQ oh section says: is you should reset your quest to use a different user. 
This is the correct way to award Facebook with best <laughs> hardware of the year, right? Just, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's this is the, the strange, interesting difficulty of this situation is that these problems are unprecedented in an entertainment machine. Uh, I, I believe still. <laughs> I, you know, you don't, yeah, yeah. You don't uh, see this in an Xbox. You don't see this in a, a DVD player. You don't see this in a PS5. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, you know what Quest is doing for uh, the industry. I don't want to say it doesn't overshadow it, but it's just too big to ignore. Um, I mean, the fact is that Facebook didn't do what they did with Quest. Um, VR would probably end up be in a in a permanent winter. I mean, like for another five or ten years. Um, and yeah, I think I th we're I hearing think that across the yeah. yeah. I think I think that's pretty fair. Uh, only the Upload VR Award Show will award Anton Hand Best Developer and the Oculus Quest Two Best Hardware. Two two <laughs> mortal enemies that cannot be more diametrically opposed. If this were Rise of the Skywalker, the Chosen One would be formed from the combination of their life forces. <laughs> <laughs> Spoil Star Wars. Yep. I don't know. That movie didn't exist anyway, so it doesn't matter. No, you can't spoil that movie. Yeah. It's fan fiction. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> so we come now to the final category of the evening slash Here afternoon. We go. Slash uh, and the nominees for the best game were Half-Life Alex, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, Population One, Star Wars Squadrons, Until You Fall, and The Room VR. Before you reveal the winner, I want to let you know that I made some alterations to the image that Xena sent over, and uh, uh -oh. the, ga the game you thought won did not win because I'm about to I'm about to pull a reverse on you right now. Uh, I'm, just, you? I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the winner's Half Life Alex. <laughs> Wait, we talked about this before. No, I'm struggling now. It, it's Half Life. All right. Yeah, it's, you're fine. You're fine. It's Half Life Alex. Yes, yeah, it's Half Life Alex. Okay. <laughs> I'm just looking at our screen. I'm not looking at the screen. I was like, what's he done? What's he done? <laughs> hey, guys, Half Life Alex won Game of the Year. What a surprise. <laughs> um, yeah. I've already said, you know, I've already. Off the stream, just, it's over. Just Yeah, we're done. Uh, there was there was a lot of debate about giving this to uh, Saints and Sinners on the strength of, you know, uh, the consistency of its releases. Uh, the strength of its physics, but I the most apart from the release of the Quest Two, the most significant moment for the VR industry this year was unquestionably the release of Alex. It was yeah, such yeah. a huge moment. It was one of those moments that really you know got VR back into mainstream conversation in a lot of ways. Um, and then you know just outside of that importance, again, it just delivered on you know such a long, polished varied uh and well thought out well sequenced campaign at the end of the day you know i like to think of uh that game in comparison to resident evil 4 a lot in that a lot of the enemy design in resident evil 4 really worked with the mechanics the game gave you about like not being able to move and shoot at the same time and you know having to do very methodical reloading and really i think in a lot of ways alex takes that and applies it kind of to the human condition of, you know, the practicalities of walking and shooting at the same time, having to think about when you're going to reload, finding the best piece of cover. I mean, this was a game where instead of kind of just shooting from the hip, like I do in so many VR shooters, once I've kind of got my way around the guns, I was, you know, on the floor, under cars, like trying to find the best angle to get a headshot off because valve just had such great design that really rooted you in those you know the physicality of that environment everything felt like a prop to be used um and then like, so many elements of the of the world works naturally i like rg's the... comment in our comments that says that they love that it pissed off flat gamers Which, yeah you know that, that's a good point yeah no I, I actually got into a huge debate with with a guy on twitter he's an editor at a different gaming site that's not vr focused at all I don't think he has any mm. VR headsets. And his his argument was that a game like this should not have been nominated for Game of the Year at the Game Awards because it wasn't. And that for the reason for the reason being that uh, not enough people could have played it. So you, you should not say a game is the best game because it's not accessible enough to enough people. 
like par- like Parasite shouldn't have won because uh, yeah, you have to read. Yeah, well, it's just, <laughs> yeah. just trying to get into that argument, doesn't it? It's a yeah, horrible it's... argument. It's a horrible argument, but a lot of people feel that way that this game it's not fair because not enough people can afford VR, can you know, etc. Um, which I can I understand, but you also you have to understand that we need games like this to make VR go mainstream. Yeah. <clears throat> if we don't have games like this, no one's going to want to buy headsets because they don't need to. But now if you want to play the latest Half-Life game, you have to have a VR headset. So I think that's yeah. very important. And there will be, you well, know... Pour, it, it... Let's pour one out for all the people that tried to get it working in flat screen mode. <laughs> yeah, that just, those efforts kind of came to a, an end rather abruptly, actually, didn't they? It's It's just going to be one of those games that I think, you know, we keep seeing time and time again in the next couple of years because it's going to be of huge importance to get this onto whatever the next vr headset from sony is um who knows if there ever might be anything that you know gets it running on natively on you know future not oculus hardware but it's it's one of those games that's going to be the barometer for what you can do in vr uh for such a long time every time you get a new headset you're going to want to try out alex with it every time you get some new peripherals or something you're going to want to know if Alex supports them. Um, and, and, you know, Valve always said that they wanted to make something that would then show developers, oh, okay, maybe I should be approaching VR in this way and thinking about combat in this way and telling stories in this certain direction or whatnot. And I really think they delivered on that. I really think they set out a really nice template at the end of the day with Alex, even even to themselves in a, in a lot of ways with what happens in that game um, and what might happen for the developer in the future. You know, hopefully we see more VR from Valve. We, d- we don't know what they're doing, but I, I I said in my review, you know, I felt like the message of that game was the best is yet to come. Um, and I think this was a really- Yeah, I mean, the way, the no spoilers, but the way it ends is like, holy crap, you know, so. Yeah, pretty big, pretty big. So congratulations to Half-Life, Alex. Uh, congratulations to everyone nominated. Congratulations to all our other winners. Thanks so much for joining us for Upload's 2020 VR Award Show. Maybe next year we'll be back in back in the studio for it. Who knows? Um, we'll have a post up later today uh, running down all the winners uh, again, just in case you missed anything. Of course, you can go back through the video. Uh, this week we'll be putting out a bit more content, although we're all largely kind of off this week, uh, resting up until we're back to tackle New Year uh, on the 4th of January with uh, when is CES happening and is CES happening? I, I don't. It's, I keep uh, getting the emails it's all and digital. honestly, I'm so happy. It's all digital. There's it's all no, digital, so it's yeah. not happening is what you're saying. I, okay. I'm so happy not to notice, not to think about those emails. Yeah. Don't make me think about them, please. <laughs> I will I will miss the LG press conference where they show me the latest fridges. Uh, that's always a highlight of the year for me. Well, we, Which, Valor and I almost bought a uh a fridge with a screen on it because we we're in the market for a new fridge because we're you know our new house is going to be built in a few months and we need we need a fridge so we're like maybe we should get one of these smart ones with wi-fi and a screen and everything and uh we 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 fortunately decided not to so we have a we have a a dumb fridge however i got a google nest hub max to set next to the fridge which has like all the same benefits plus more and it was cheaper than buying the fridge with the screen. So I figured, I, I think I, I outplayed Samsung a little bit there. You yeah. You wasted them. I did. All right. Well, here's to a, here's to a year in uh, a great year in VR. And hopefully here's to uh, another great year. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll be there every step of the way. All right, yeah, guys. Thank, we'll, uh, thanks Mountain Dew for uh, all that you've done. Mountain Dew. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll see you. We'll see you in the future. Have a good new year's uh, and we'll, we'll see you soon.